Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today I'm going to be doing the first of a two-part series uh, demonstrating my entire comics creation process. Now some of you know that I do a graphic novel series for Dark Horse Comics called Brody's Ghost, and uh, the artwork inside looks like this. And uh, so what I'm going to do is um, create a couple of panels uh, over the course of these two videos that uh, show how I create artwork of this kind. So let's not waste any more time. Let's just go ahead and get into it. Now when I begin doing a comic book, I always start with the script. I write out the words of what's going to happen uh, in the scene, or in this case, in these two particular panels. Um, so let's go ahead and in time lapse, I'll, I'll write out that script and uh, we'll come back to talk a little bit about it. Okay, so this is not fancy paper, this is just office paper. It really doesn't matter, and I'm writing for myself, so the handwriting doesn't have to be uh, great, it just as long as I can read it, basically. And uh, I begin here with some stage direction. Brody stands on the balcony and looks out at the city. Um, and so, you know, not every time do I need to write this to myself, but just, to, you know, in certain cases I do have to make clear what is going to be in the panel. Uh, and then uh, this is sort of internal dialogue here. I knew he was out there. I'd find him eventually. Uh, and then next panel, cut to the close-up of his face looking worried. But would I find him in time? Uh, so these are basically these two little bits of narration. And uh, I wanted to show you how sometimes I go back and self-edit, right? So I might say, you know, uh, I think the I knew should be down here. I knew I'd uh, find him eventually. So let's cut the I knew from there. Um, this becomes the beginning of the sentence. He was out there, and it doesn't sound right, let's erase that period. He was out there somewhere. Right, he's looking out at the city. I knew I'd find him eventually. Okay, so this gives you a sample of how I'm self-editing. I'm going back and rereading things and changing things. You want to work all this out as best you can before you get onto the artwork. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and get onto it. Now the next thing I might do is just do a quick little thumbnail sketch to show myself what my basic plan is um, for these panels. And again, I'm using really sort of rough uh, office paper. I'm not uh, pulling out the fancy paper for this. And part of that is almost psychological. If I start spending too much time uh, at the early stage, I may be reluctant to throw away bad ideas, because it's like, man, I spent a lot of time on that. So I'm sort of deliberately not spending a lot of time, uh, so that I can feel free to just throw these ideas away if they're not working. So uh, first thing I want to do is figure out where the narration is going to go, right? We have this, uh, uh, he was out there somewhere, I knew I'd find him eventually. I have to make space for that, I don't want to crowd that out. And so uh, let's say it's the balcony scene here, um, so I draw the balcony, uh, Brody's going to be here, He's looking out, you know, I'm not putting any time into this really. And back here, uh, some buildings so that we know that he's looking at the cityscape. And then over here, again, making space for the narration, but would I find him in time? Uh, that's where that's going to go. And let's say we zoom in here on his face. He's supposed to be worried, so uh, we get a good look at that. And uh, basically, that could be a plan, could work nicely. Now, I want to show you, though, that again, you may be uh, self-editing at this stage and say, well, wait a minute, this first panel here is not about the balcony, really. It's more about the city. He's looking out at the city. So let's uh, go ahead and, you know, throw that idea away and see if we can do better by uh, widening out this first panel. There's no reason why both panels have to be the same size. Let's get more of a panoramic feeling. Uh, let's turn the second panel into a sliver uh, over here. And now let's pull over to one side. Maybe it's like we're standing on the balcony with Brody. We're sort of seeing what he sees. Not going to put a whole lot of time into this. Just sort of throwing in. We're on the side. He's in profile. He's looking out. Okay, now we got a lot of space for the city. Don't forget we got to get that narration in there. So let's leave that there. Then I won't draw any pretty buildings there. All of the buildings will be over here. 
again, not putting time into this, just sort of tossing down an idea until I think, yeah, that's better. Now we know that, boy, the city is so big, uh, he's out there somewhere, but then the reader thinks, yeah, he's out there somewhere, but look at the size of that city, you know. Now you could uh, go ahead and put that other sliver of narration right there, but I'm thinking, actually, I would rather have it down at the bottom, because sometimes, as a comics creator, you're thinking about the path of the eye going through the page. And so, if we have this first narration here, uh, he, the, the reader looks at this stuff. Uh, if I put this down here, the first thing the reader will probably look at is the face. So see the expression first and say, oh, now he's worried about something. What is he worried about? Then you read the narration and you get that second line, but would I find him in time? Um, you know, just to show you, not necessarily that this is the way to do it, but uh, that this is the kind of stuff you're thinking about as a uh, comics creator. Uh, where you put these narration balloons, these word uh, balloons, uh, really matters. And uh, let's say that he's in shadow here. You might even start to think about this stuff. That, and when he's on the balcony, he's in shadow. That's going to make him come closer, especially in this one. We make him darker. Uh, it appears to be closer to the viewer, and then the city can be a lot lighter, you know, can, can even plan in advance. And so this shows you how much of it you can work out at this rough thumbnail uh, stage before you move on to the next step. Okay, now believe it or not, I might still um, do another rough version, this time um, taking a little more time with it, but still not worrying about being perfect. And uh, uh, this way I can sort of work out a few more of the details um, without being fully committed to it. It's very easy to e erase things and not be, uh, you know, heartbroken about uh, letting something go, especially when you're making these really <laughs> cruddy looking lines like I'm making. I, again, it really is sort of like I'm tricking myself into not spending too much time. Now, speaking of spending too much time, I think I am actually going to kick it into time lapse to show you uh, how I would take this to this sort of secondary level, and then I'll come back to explain a little bit uh, about what I did. Okay, so with this version, uh, still very loose, but I've got the words in here, and I can kind of do a test drive, reading through it and seeing uh, how it's going to work. And, you know, if you compare it to uh, the sketch that I did before, we are starting to get a little more into the detail, light sources, stuff like that, the a basic idea of the perspective I'm going to be using. But uh, otherwise, um, quite loose and certainly not something that is going to be used um, uh, directly in the final art. But that, indeed, is where we're headed next. We're going to move on to the final pencils. All right, so now I've switched uh, to the good paper, and to me that means uh, Strathmore Bristol. Now, those of you who can't find this, don't worry, it doesn't have to be this exact same company, but uh, see if you can find Bristol board. Um, uh, in this case, it's sold in pads. Other art stores may sell it in loose sheets or whatever, but it's good, strong, thick paper, and it will hold up to erasing and so forth. So um, let me go ahead and uh, start talking a little bit about how I'm going to lay out the final lines. All right, so, you know, at this point there is really inevitably going to be loads of time lapse, but I thought I would at least try to start uh, by giving you a sense of how I ease my way into the process. And um, just put up down a few loose lines, um, uh, giving myself a sense of where I intend to put this character, where his arms will be, and so forth. Uh, but I don't need to remain absolutely committed to anything at this stage. Uh, it, it remains fluid, and you can see how, how light I'm making all the lines, because indeed it may change quite a bit. I am going to have to get some sense of the uh, perspective system, and that may mean coming up with some idea of where the horizon line is going to be. You know, I may put it here for now, that may change. Um, and then uh, those of you who know about perspective know that the lines uh, begin to fan out uh, generally in this kind of a direction. It's going to be a two-point perspective, though, so in a way the buildings uh, will have a second face that, uh, where the lines go off in that direction. Uh, again, keeping things very loose uh, just as I begin the process here, making sure I leave space 
for the words. And um, let me go, I'll go ahead and do a little bit of this real time, and then I think I am going to have to finish it all off in uh, time lapse. Old man time lapse. Gonna have to invite old man time lapse over to help me finish the job. Anyway, um, I hope this gives you some sense of uh, my process. Uh, just to be clear, I don't mean to say that uh, every comic creator does this or does anything even remotely like it. Everyone finds their own way, and that's why I think I'm going to call this um, uh, video how I make comics rather than how to make comics. Uh, truly, there is no one way, and um, I would encourage you to find your own way. But uh, hopefully this you know, demystifies a little bit maybe the process. And um, I'm going to go ahead now in time lapse and uh, take us through to the final pencil lines. Uh, that's really going to be uh, the end of this video, but next week we're going to take it all the way to completion with inks and gray toning and all that good stuff. Well, uh, let's go ahead and finish up the final pencil lines. Alright, well I'm essentially done with the um, penciling process, but I had an idea I thought uh, people would enjoy uh, at me adding an Easter egg into this uh, panel down here, and I thought wouldn't it be funny if there was a product called Blushies? This kind of proves maybe that uh, I'm just goofing around with this thing. Uh, now I just want to clarify because some people might say, uh, Mark, you didn't show us how to draw a city here. Uh, you did that all in time lapse. Well, please keep in mind this video is not about how to draw a city. It's not about how to draw a guy on a balcony. Uh, it really is about just taking you through my process and whatever scene I happened uh, to draw here, of course, um, you know, requires a separate uh, video if you really want to see a step-by-step -step on how it's done. And if you do want to see, like, how to draw a cityscape uh, in perspective or whatever, go ahead and put that in the comments section and uh, hopefully I can uh, get to that in the future. But of course the next video is going to be the continuation of this process. Uh, and you're going to see me uh, carry on to the inking, uh, scan into the computer, going to add uh, gray tones in Photoshop, and uh, finally, also in Photoshop, the uh, lettering. So uh, much to look forward to if indeed you want to see this entire process. Uh, and um, I do apologize because years ago I started a video, uh, I think it was like guys climbing up a mountain or something like that, and I never did get to the second part. I sort of lost interest in that, guys. I'm sorry. But uh, I am not going to lose interest in this one. This one uh, I'm committed to, and next week, without fail, you will see me take it, uh, take it to the next level and finish off the process. Well, let me refocus the camera so that you can see the whole thing, and then we'll wind it down with some final words. <laughs> It was, it was already refocused. I didn't need to ref. Krilly, you are an idiot. You, my friend, are an idiot. Uh, and on that note, let me go ahead and wind it down quickly with uh, a few words about my books here. Thanks to anyone who's supported me by getting Mickey Falls and Brody's Ghost, as well as Mastering Manga, Mastering Manga 2, my How to Draw books. I do greatly appreciate your support. Uh, but let's go ahead and lay down this pencil right here where it doesn't obscure anything. And uh, I'll thank you once again for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll be back with another one real soon.